central heating relays. My name is Alan Hart and today this is the video that you've been asking for and it's how to wire relays onto a central heating system and why, why you would need relays on a central heating system. So on this particular job we've got here, this is in my man cave, I've got the carer boiler and it's got a low voltage connection but we've got it wired onto an s plan and it's also got underfloor heating and it's got an extra pump on there so i'm going to show you how to wire that and, and and how relays work as well i've got darren here darren's an electrician and darren's also going to help us with this video so yeah let's uh, without further ado let's go and have a look it's important to remember that any electrical works are carried out by a qualified electrician or a competent person and that any works carried out adhere to the current electrical regulations. Okay, thank you, Alan. Uh, so just briefly, I'm going to describe what we've got here. So we've got a Vakira combi boiler and then we've got essentially two zones. So we've got a zone valve, which is feeding some radiators in an adjacent room. And then we've got another zone valve via a pump as well, which is feeding underfloor heat into this room. Um, essentially this boiler um, requires volt free switching for multi zones to work on this combi boiler. So I'm going to just describe uh, basically what I've done here with the wiring. Um, we've got a fuel spur obviously for us uh, to isolate this boiler and all this wiring. And I've used um, a wiring centre with some relays which facilitate and enable that volt free switching for the boiler. Okay Alan, um, so now we're just going to show you a little bit more about this relay and how it works. Um, essentially it's a switch and in this part here it's got like an electromagnetic coil so when you pass current through it it shuts or closes the circuit. Here I've done a, a diagram before. Um, we've got the coil which at this moment in time is not energized because this switch is in the open position because this is a normally open relay uh, for this purpose um, when the current passes through this coil um, it shuts essentially the, the switch and closes it um, so in this case we've got the external controls at the moment that i've installed so when the when the 230 volt side of the circuit calls for heat it induces a current through this coil which then closes this switch that then goes out to the boiler and fires the boiler up. Thank you for that Darren and just to try and explain what's going on with that relay what we're trying to do we want we want it to be separate so we've got a feed from the zone valve so if you imagine we've got two zone valves and Darren's going to go back over this again shortly but we've got two zone valves and one of them zone valves we've got an external pump but if your orange wires if they both went into the wiring centre like they normally do, then what would happen is when you add either zone would turn the pump on, the external pump on, but obviously we only want the pump to come on when we want it to come on and it would back feed. So the reason we would use a relay. Um, so on this particular one, what we're doing, we'll get us live, the switch live, it comes down the orange wire onto there and then what we want to do then, we then want to make it so the boiler works, but we don't want that switch live wire to touch the wire that's going back to the boiler. So it's separate, it's breaking it. So with the multimeter, I'm just gonna show you, I've just put it into, onto the bleep on the multimeter. And if I turn the power on, so if I turn, if I get the switched live, so the orange wire, if the orange wire is coming back now to this relay, I'll just switch that on. And we can see that that's bleeping. So what's actually happening now? Let me just turn that off. So what's what's that? Uh, what's actually happening now? You've got your switch slide coming from your zone valve. It's going through your relay and then back like that. But it's making this side now join up. If this makes sense. Darren will go into this in. A bit more technical detail than me but if you imagine your link you just your normal link that's in your boiler that you pull out what it's doing in theory obviously we're going through all the zone valves and all that and we're going to show you how to do that short we'll show you how to wire that 
in full but what that's doing there if you took that link out of your boiler this link it would be there so if that makes if that makes any sense at all and on this particular one this would be the link here so you'd normally have your link in there joining them two together you'd pull that link out and then you'd wire this this would go to the other side of the relay I'll just pack it, pass you uh, back to Darren now okay Alan yeah we'll try and go into a bit more detail um, and hopefully make a bit of sense of this really uh, so Alan's just shown you um, a visual over the PCB in question the connector which is 12 volts essentially you notice there were two cables just a brown and a blue coming in and out of that terminal this is it here I thought I'd just do a very simple drawing this is uh, the this is the, basically the link that Alan's removed because we want to now control this with obviously these relays this is the reason for this video at the moment you can see this is in the open position just like the zone valves above here so what we've got here might sound a little bit complicated but really it isn't so we'll just start off with zone one which is controlling the radiators now remember the zone one um, just has a zone valve it's just running off the internal pump in the boiler because it's a combi boiler remember so it's nice and easy the orange uh, or what i like to call the fire wire uh, the orange coming from the zone valve goes into the switch live of the 230 volt coil at the bottom of the coil we've got the neutral which goes back to the 10-way box that always stays there permanently and once the orange calls for heat you get 230 volts down this coil but the important thing to remember is on this side when this switch shuts this is 12 volts so we've got two circuits remember 230 volts going through the coil and we've just got the 12 volt switching uh, control which will then go back to the boiler to fire it up so that's that's zone one essentially and this bit here is just closing this this switch here between in and out just like putting a link in but we've taken it out remember zone two a little bit more different um, because we've got an external pump on zone two so zone two remember is for the underfloor heating for this room and this is the whole reason why we're having to put these relays in because as alan mentioned before you you would get back feed if you put uh, like a, a normal s plan say with two zones you would normally put all the oranges together which would then fire the pump up irrespective of which zone was calling for heat and clearly we don't want that we want independent control for both these zones so the only difference here with this one is because we've got the external pump for the underfloor heating we've still got the orange fire wire on the uh, two part valve again this is for this room but we've got the brown for the pump which goes in the same, same terminal of the switch live to, uh, to power up this coil which again the same principle closes this switch which then fires the boiler up the critical thing is is when you do get on this case if you get power going down through this 12 volts it only backs feeds to this point because this coil is not energized at this point in this scenario because relay one is not calling for heat so you would not get any back feed um, I hope that sort of like makes uh, some kind of sense and I've tried to draw it as you know as simple as possible really um, over to you Alan thank you for that Darren Darren's going to show us how to wire this next but I just thought I'd explain what we've done so far and, and how that works so this this nest thermostat here is for the underfloor heating so if I turn the underfloor heating up what will happen now this zone valve will come on orange lights come on on zone valve obviously this relay has energized and then the boiler will come on so if you heard that click then and now it's brought the boiler on if I turn this back off obviously that would go off I'll just wait a minute for that and now that's gone back off now if we turn the other zone on I'll just manually turn it on here I'll wait till the boiler goes off but manually turn it on so we've manually turned the the other zone on in there and now this relay will come on again clicked on there 
and it's blocked the zone valve on so the lights come on from this zone valve and boilers come back on again but what would happen on a, on a, if we hadn't done this with relays the orange wires in the wiring center because normally all your oranges are together and then you from your oranges would go to what, however you wire it's usually your boiler and your pump but your oranges would be together and that would back feed I keep saying about this back feed but what that would do is when we brought the other zone on in there it would bring the under underfloor heating pump on so that's why we have to do this with with the relays so I hope that makes a little bit of sense for you what I'll do now is I'll pass you back over to to Darren and he's going to draw um, draw this sort of wiring centre out here, draw it out on board and try and hopefully help you understand how to wire that as well. If you do have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. Obviously, I've got the relays here, so I can always do a follow up video if, if need be. I'll just pass you back over to Darren now. Right, Alan, um, here goes. A drawing, another drawing I made earlier. Um, on face of it, it looks quite complicated and overwhelmed, but really I'm going to take my time, start at the beginning, just break it all down for you guys and uh, we'll go from there. So we'll start off at the fused 3 amp double pole spur or isolator. That's where we're going to start from. Uh, you'll notice in the green is the earth, which is really important. That should all be taken to um, everything here, every device, switch, whatever it may be, thermostat. But I've omitted that for clarity because it would get awfully messy if we uh, if we put all the earths in place. But if you just take that as given that the earth will go to the boiler, the zone valves, the thermostats in the floor, pumps, the relays and zones, really important that all the earths are connected. Um, so uh, back at the fuel spur isolator, we've got the main 230 volt supply, the live and the neutral you'll see. The neutral all being in blue and you'll see that goes to every device on here, apart from the 12 volt uh, PCB. We don't want anything other than 12 volts um, at, that, at that PCB point there. So all the neutrals go back to the 10 way box. I haven't got a 10 way box in here because we just don't have a big enough whiteboard, but you'll see they're all connected together. So they would all go back to the 10 way box um, along with the earths as well. Same thing with the live to a certain degree. Now, when you see the letter L for live, we'll take that as a given that it's a permanent live, it's on all the time. Where you see anything that says SL, that stands for switch live, okay? So going back to the permanent live or live as we've got here, they would all go back to the 10 way box. So that would be your, your thermostats. If all your thermostats need a 230 volt supply. You need a 230 volts of permanent supply again for your boiler because your PC needs to be all at PCB, sorry, at your boiler always wants to have that permanent feed. Um, and you will also have uh, in your zone valves, your, your greys, they all want to go back to your 10 way box as well, they're permanent feeds. We'll now go to um, the zone valves. I think that's probably a good point to start with. Um, a lot of people don't really understand the zone valves and what they actually do, but if I can quickly go over the principle of it with you, then you'll see how they come into play further on down the line with this explanation. So again, I've omitted the earth, but you'd have five cores. So you'd have your gray, you'd have brown, you'd have orange, your neutral, and then finally your earth. But again, in this drawing for clarity, we haven't got the earths in place here. So your grey would be, like I said before, just a, a short while ago, would be a permanent live, 230 volts. Your brown is your switch live. Now this would come from, um, say a thermostat, a timer, whatever the situation may be. In this case, it's an Est smart thermostat. And then you've got the orange, which I call the fire wire, which helps me to remember that that conductor that orange fires the boiler up and the pumps and that type of thing and then of course we've got the neutral which is goes back to the 10 way box as I mentioned earlier. The key thing about the zone valves is when you get a 230 volt supply from whatever external device it is in this case an S thermostat as soon as you get a 230 volt supply at your brown 
the motor kicks in inside here, inside the zone valve, the motor operates and basically operates as a switch and connects the brown and the orange together. When that happens, in this case, the orange then goes down to your top of your coils, in this case, relay one and relay two, and they would fire up. What we've done here though, because we've got separate zone valves, these are operated by separate um, relays. So the relays are totally independent of each other. So we've got relay zone one here and relay zone two here. So just going a bit back to the other drawing, these are just a small version of the bigger ones that was on here on the last drawing that I did for you. Um, so, so what would happen then, just going back to it. So we've got the, the lives coming in Say, for instance, we've got the scenario now that um, zone one, which is the nest thermostat for the radiators in the next room, that's calling for heat because the, temp the ambient temperature has dropped. So the link in here would link across from the permanent live to the switch live. And if we follow this down, it would go to zone valve number one. And it would hit the brown and it would energize the mechanical motor, which would then, if we follow it along the orange wire, would go down to the top of the 230 volt coil on relay one, which would then activate, close this circuit here, and if we follow it back, which is on the red conductor now for 12 volts, would go back here and essentially make that loop, that link, um, to fire the boiler up. So now, we, if we have the scenario zone two, so that's in here, the underfloor heating, the ambient temperature drops, the nest thermostat calls for heat, it wants, to, it wants to get warm. So again, the little link comes into play, um, like a little switch link inside the nest thermostat. So we follow the switch live again. In this case, it does the same thing. It's going to the brown, but in this, in this case, zone valve number two for this zone. Again, the mechanical motor operates and sends 230 volts down the orange wire zone valve two and that goes to the switch live which operates the 230 coil on relay number two now going back to my other video with me other simplified drawing of the two relays if you remember the underfloor heating uh, requires an external pump that's the whole reason why we're doing this video with the relays so we need to take the brown of that pump down and wire it into the same terminal as the switch live of the 230 volt top of the coil. So that energizes that just like it does in the other relay. It closes this circuit and again sends the power round here up and across back to the 12 volt making that link again and again find the boiler up independently so you've got two zones working independently. Um, and that's, that's the way that um, you uh, wire this system. Thank you very much for that, Darren. I hope you found this video of some use. Uh, another, another time when you might need to use relays, if you've got a bigger system where you've got multiple pumps on the system, that's another time when you might need to use relays. And one thing to remember, this board here, you could fit as many relays in here as you wanted to. So that's another option for you as well. Um, as I say, I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share, comment, all that good stuff. Ring the bell, etc., etc., etc. That might be uh, falling out. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.